This is the Richard and Judy Book Club in conjunction with WH Smith, and this is the latest book, The Poison Tree by Erin Kelly. Okay, it's 1997. Uh, it's an extraordinarily hot London summer, and that sense of place, north, heavily wooded London, the unending heat wave, and the young people living this extraordinary bohemian lifestyle in a dropout kind of way in, in, a, in a rambling North London house is what is at the heart of this book. It's succulent, it's, it ha it's full of atmosphere, it's full of heat, and it's deadly. Because within this, this bright summer light, Erin, uh, danger lurks. Um, and it's not giving anything away to say that this is about murders, it's about death. And we don't know until the end who kills who uh, and who dies. But what I found extraordinary was you made it possible for an ordinary, decent, intelligent person to commit murder. And it makes me wonder if, if you think that's true of any of us, that in the right circumstances, you know, with the right fall of events, fall of the cards, we're all capable, if we, if we feel we have to, of killing somebody. Do you think that's the case? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Really? I, think we're, I think we're all... You, me, her. Yeah, yeah? I'm, sure, I'm sure there are. If the right buttons are pushed, if the right stresses <laughs> are present, um, I think all of us have... I think all human beings contain every... the potential for every emotion and action. Most of us, fortunately, actually, travel through life... Mm on a fairly even, narrow road mm. because we aren't placed into horrific, life-threatening, traumatic situations. Mm. Or if we are, we, uh, it happens at a time when we are solid or grounded enough to deal with them. But and so was, that, was that the concept that was at the start of the book? Was that what you thought, that's what I want to write about? Or did, did it evolve into No, that? I didn't have anything approaching the concept <laughs> at all. I had some characters that were kind of milling around in my mind for the best part of five years and I had a location, and they gradually came together and built into a story. I, I certainly didn't think in terms of concepts or themes no. or no. messages or anything but, like I mean, that. The, the, the characters are absolutely, obviously, essential. I mean, basically, you have Karen, who is um, an ordinary um, sort of middle-class girl. She's but square, with, square as they come. Square, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a young girl. Um, and then you have this amazing Bieber, who she... Uh, I love that name Bieber because mm. it brings back the 60s and the whole kind of you know youth and freedom and and, and but it's and, nothing to do you know, with the Bieber fashion. No, 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 no. Nothing. It's just and she meets Bieber and Bieber is a really extraordinary, seductive character. I mean, she's almost like a siren, isn't she? She kind of draws Karen into her world, and Karen becomes deeply involved with her and her brother Rex. Yeah, she does. She is um, Bieber is the trigger for. Mm a lot of the nasty things that happen in this book, but she's also a very intoxicating and charming character. Yeah. And she's not based on anyone in particular, although lots of people I know think she is and they think they know who it is. <laughs> um, but I've met lots of people who have a reputation for being free spirits. Yeah. And yeah. they're often very physically attractive and they're often quite hedonistic. Yeah. Um, they're very often independently wealthy, which is how come they get away with it yeah. for so long. And there is always... A, um, hand in hand with this great charm and great enthusiasm is always an astonishingly selfish side because to be a free spirit you have to be willing to just dump the problems in other people's laps. Yeah. Hmm. She's, Bieber is the kind, I mean they're both students um, and, and, and Bieber is in a play and needs to learn a foreign language to, in order to deliver her lines properly. Um, and Karen is, is fluent in, in a number of languages, so that's how they, they come together. Bieber mm -hmm. puts an advert on the student notice board saying, I need to be taught this. Um, and in a sense, Karen falls in love with her, doesn't she? It's in, in fact, at one point, I thought it was going down the lesbian road, um, because there is almost a moment, isn't there, uh, where, there where there is a physical connection. But that, that, that was, I presume, just a sort of almost a metaphor for her, her passion for this free spirit that she's, she's with. Um, I think it was. Uh, Karen, the narrator, is a very sheltered... She's intellectually brilliant, mm. but she has... She has no real experience of life, and for the first time, really, at 21, she realises what it's like to completely lose herself in someone else's world. And I think uh, the intention was that it's literally the strength of her feeling is so intense that she almost presumes that physicality must follow, yes. because, you know, I think at one point she said that these are, this is the girl all the songs are about. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, she realises later when she ends up in bed with Bieber's brother that actually she was barking <laughs> up the wrong tree the first time yeah. round. But, but uh, you know what it reminded me of? I don't know if you've ever read it, um, but it, it had strong echoes to me of, of A Secret History by Donna Tartt. Yeah, I have read it. Have you yeah. read that? Um, that kind of strong, not, not fully a deux, fully a toi, I should say, really, mm. kind of thing, that, that kind of intense heat, that summer, that 
the business of living life in a way um, that was completely out of reality. Did you like A Secret History? Is, I loved is that it, yeah. a, so yeah. that's a, So that's a compliment, good. Because yeah. <laughs> I loved it too, I really loved it. Mm. And it, it does have that thing. You write, <laughs> uh, you write about, the, again, giving nothing away, you write about the killings, uh, which is what the book is, is all about, uh, ultimately. Um, chillingly, I thought. Um, I, th I personally think writing about murder and death is as hard as it is to write a, a sex scene. I mean, it's tricky stuff. You really pull it off. Um, and I think, crucially, it's because the killings are, we, again, without giving anything away, they're impulse killings, aren't they? They're, they're killings. Yes. I mean, we yes. may have gone along, on a long journey to yeah. get there, but in the end, they are moments of passion, aren't they? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and drama. How did you prepare to write those scenes? Because they're, they're great, they're really satisfying, they work. Um, that's interesting you should say that because they're pretty much the last scenes that I wrote in the book. Really? I mean, it's... Oh, so you didn't write it in order then? No, oh, no, right. I didn't. I wrote it um, uh, in a very disjointed way. I had a few key scenes that I wrote and then, um, and oh, then eventually it became chronological. But the reason I shied away from the murder scenes is because... I'm actually not that, I mean, this, this book does partly fall into the crime genre, but I'm not really interested in the forensics no. No, of no. killing. And I know that there are some authors who spend weeks cooking up fantastic, ingenious ways to bump off oh, their characters. Oh, there's nothing ingenious about the way these people No, do. and I, I thought, well, oh, this is, it's almost incidental, you know, the method. Yes. I, I wanted to think about how the characters would feel and why they would do it. Yeah. And I was so intent on exploring that that at the end I thought, well, and now how's it actually going to happen? Um, <laughs> but did you chill yourself? Because it, it's chilling, really. Because it happened so suddenly in, in all cases. It's I don't know about fast. chilling. It was very exciting was to it? write. Yeah, yeah. those mm. scenes, definitely. Mm. Mm. And, and the ending, which is um, obviously we cannot give away, but is, again, in its own way, very chilling. But I think very right. I yeah. mean, thinking about it, I couldn't think of any other way it could have ended uh, than how it does. Um, so do you think there's justice in, in some murders? Um, I don't know. I don't. Do you think there's justice in the final murder in this book? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I didn't set out to write a morality tale. Certainly, but you have I, a bit. That's a, you have yeah, actually. Yeah, I might have yeah. done, but it was it was an accident rather than by design. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I also think, think so. You, but yeah. I hope that you're cheering on both sides to some extent. Hmm. Not in the end. In the okay. End, just, uh, in the end, it's just one side. But, okay. um, but you see, say you wrote it in a disjointed kind of way. Now, that's interesting because there's a lot of drugs in the book. They do a mm. lot of drugs in this summer, um, these young people in this house. There are, no, there are no parent figures there at all. They're absolutely allowed to do what they like. Um, and it's funny, there is something slightly druggy about the feel of the book. Something, not that I'd know. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but it's quite spaced out in, in its style. And is, do you think that's a, a result of writing it in the way you did? And um. Bits and bobs? Do you mean that it's quite slow paced and... Well, I didn't know well, that sounds critical. I didn't mean it that way. It's quite dreamlike. Okay, yeah, mm. I see what you mean. It wasn't a conscious decision to portray it in a druggy sort of way. It was, if, if anything, I was trying to define what it's like to be 21 and mm. caught between university and real life. Yes. And I was trying to, um, you know, just the feeling of not having to get up in the morning. And drugs are a part of that. For lots yeah. of young people, I mean, when Karen encounters drugs for the first time in the book, mm. It completely blows her mind, but lots of people that age will have them as a part of their lives for mm. years, and it's n it's not a big deal. So I think, in some ways, I think the lazy life invites the drugs yeah. in rather Fine. than vice versa. And then the book then goes back ten years, mm. but the opening chapter is starting ten years and goes back. I mean, actually, by that time, the student stuff is completely gone, and mm. Karen is a very responsible mother. Um, and with trying, a secret. With a secret, trying very hard to bring up her young daughter in a responsible way. And that, that whole student irresponsible thing has completely moved away from her life mm. and what she's made of it until the end when the irresponsible <laughs> note <laughs> comes back okay. to mm. disastrous effect. Yes. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to hear the way you describe not having a concept for the novel when you started writing it and not writing it in sequence, because um, it works beautifully. It really does. Thank you. It, it's, it's a testament to writing in that style, I have to say. The Poison Tree, Erin uh, Kelly, it's a great book. You'll really enjoy it. So, and it's a, because it's set in the summer, it does feel like a classic summer read. I'm sure you'll, you'll love it. Uh, and you want to find out more about the book, more about Erin here, uh, what we thought of it in our reviews, and what you think about it in your reviews, you go to the WH Smith book site, a web club rather. It's www.whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy. Enjoy.